And welcome in everyone to My Chamber TV. We are the heartbeat of the Tampa Bay community. We are featuring today the Tarpon Springs Chamber of Commerce. I'm one of your hosts, Barbara Marville Kelly. Thank you for joining us. And with me is Jean Hungerville. And it's so great to have you back. I say this every time when we I open know. our show. We were just here. We were just here. I know. Weren't every we? month. And <laughs> then, then there was a series of times where we, it wasn't us together. That's right. And that was really sad. But now that we're back together. I know. It's so exciting yes. because we, you bring the very best guests oh. from Tarpon and I live in Tarpon Springs so it's it's exciting to see I've learned so much since we've been doing these shows and I'm gonna let you in, in, go ahead and introduce our guests because you had an interesting meeting with them yes. to bring them on board with the Tarpon Ch uh, Chamber of Commerce. Well so. it, yeah it was it was um, one of those um, sandbar architecture Daniel Edgel and Jenny McLeod and Daniel joined um, about the time you started your your business and then I had been in business for a couple of years okay at that point and yeah. um, so then when Jenny came on board we sat down and had a really neat meaty conversation over coffee and um, you know we bring on someone to do marketing so talk a little bit about what you guys do and how what bringing her on board has done to change the architecture business because that's something that you, um, you know, really thought through right yeah so for, for me bringing Jenny on board is, was a big deal um, I'm an architect we do commercial architecture and uh, so we help people with their uh, with their new buildings additions renovations tenant spaces uh, I mean if you think about it for a commercial business and it requires construction we'll help you with that and uh, you know, building a business, you can only do so much yourself. And so um, after a while, you realize you need to bring on help. And for me, that that was a big heartache, just figuring out how I can bring on help. And oh, as yeah. a business owner, also understand that, that now somebody else is going to uh, depend on me for their livelihood. And so uh, uh, what happened was I, I realized that I was not able to maintain relationships with people because I was too busy doing my work and I needed somebody to help me out and you know Jenny here has a heart of gold and you know I love her very much um, we've been friends for a long time and mm -hmm. so I offered her the job of helping me to take care of my friends who also help feed my business and she's been great at that so far that I've, makes sense yeah, yeah. you know I, we're I thought not looking back that is such a great idea because I have other architectural firms that I have been around that are other members of the chamber. I don't think have a marketing person. Mm -hmm. And that was really so smart because then you can really focus on the stuff that you do that is so gorgeous. Exactly. Well, and yeah. not leaving anybody left behind. You're mm -hmm. able to have hands on through Jenny. Well, it's not just, it's not marketing. <coughs> you know, it, it's really maintaining relationships and, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and you know, helping to guide people because they, they call me as a resource because they know I have a certain expertise and sometimes we can help them sometimes we can't and so you know Jenny's job is also to make sure that you know I'm holding my end up of the deal oh, end of the deal up. yeah so you know she'll follow the projects mm -hmm. and um, maintain communication with people so she doesn't disappear when she gets a job so so Jenny how long have you been in marketing well, um, I've been, been in like public relations really for okay. um, quite some time, about 20 years, ah. working in different businesses and um, getting to know people. And, you know, really that's just what I love to do is to get to know people and see how I can help them. And um, working with Daniel, I've been able to do that because they do need some help. That's <laughs> right. And, yeah. and you have matched enthusiasm for what he's doing. And if you've been in public relations and all of that, you yeah. already have the connection even before you get started. Yeah. So tell me, how has it been? How long have you been with Daniel? Uh, going on eight weeks, I think. That's just about. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> well, yeah. God bless you. I was thinking it was going to be longer, right? You know, it feels yeah. like that conversation was like six months ago. <laughs> I've lost all it's sense the of time. COVID time warp. Yeah. 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 You know, that's yeah. a good way to explain that. So, how has, I don't know, it always comes up, but with the economy and what's going on, I don't even want to give it the energy, but you know what I'm referring to. Mm -hmm. Is your business mm -hmm. moving forward and yes. continuing on? Yes, we are. And it, it's been interesting because uh, I deal with people who are, are growing their businesses. They, they have goals and they have aspirations. And 
uh, I found that small businesses have trouble planning and so they're scared right now. Mm, Large sure. businesses that have resources and that are, are thinking forward, thinking ahead past COVID, they are still working towards mm -hmm. their goals mm -hmm. in growing past the pandemic. Yes, yes. Okay. And so we've seen that shift in our workload where smaller projects have dropped off, larger projects are coming in and moving forward. Wow. And so, you know, for me, it's been a great shift, but, um, you know, we'd like to encourage people to continue to, you know, work towards building those goals and dreams, and we want to help them with that. I think that's such a great way to think these days. I know my husband and I mm. think that way, too. This, this too shall pass, and if you allow yourself to get caught right deep in the gutter with all of this, and then what? You know, you go, I mean, yeah. it's a whole mental thing with mm -hmm. yourself. So this is really refreshing news to hear mm -hmm. that, that the companies are moving forward. Mm -hmm. So talk a little bit about what type of work you will create. You're a designer, you're yeah, an your architect. passion of what it, you. Yeah, which, exactly. And yeah. we've got several examples, which hopefully they're gonna be putting up on the oh, screen good. when we're talking oh, we to. Do. I don't know if we can see them or not, but uh, you know, more, most recently we've we found that we're doing some uh, airport work. Mm -hmm. Well, this project right here, um, that's a commercial renovation of, mm -hmm. a, um, of a commercial building in Washington, D.C. Nice. It's a 10 story building. Uh, Very nice. Extremely uh, competitive in Washington, mm -hmm. D.C. Yes. So um, they're taking what was about a class B space and creating a trophy space. So it's that, lovely. So that, that way they can um, be competitive in the marketplace. And this one is? Yeah, we do ecclesiastic church uh, work right here. So this is, uh, mm -hmm. this is a rendering of, a, of an addition right here for a, um, a Protestant church. Okay. Um, <clears throat> This right here, uh, I did this a few years ago. So it, it, what this is is it actually administrative building for uh, the Rochester Regional Transport Authority. Uh, mm -hmm. They were adding on to their facility. Um, Rochester, New York, or Rochester, Rochester Minnesota? New York. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Very wow. nice. Very nice. What's your favorite kind of design, and what's your passion when you're doing this? It's what, what goes through your mind, and what is your ideal? You know. Um, <clears throat> I, I don't, I don't necessarily aim to, to please myself because I'm, I'm never going to get there. And so <laughs> I, I see it as, I see the design as a collaborative effort. Mm -hmm. um, my my clients, they they have their own tastes and their own, their own goals, that their own message that they're trying to communicate. Mm -hmm. And so, what I do is I take that information and I attempt to distill it and create a space or a, a form out of it. So, you know, what, what do you need? What are you trying to communicate? What, what's your aesthetic? And it's a collaborative effort between myself and my clients. And so each project is different in that way. You know, I'm really here to help people find their voice within their facility. That's well expressed, and that's the right answer mm -hmm. if I was looking for an architect yep, to design my yeah. massive building, right? Because you're looking out for the customer. I can't help so myself could, but ask yeah. you this because you're a, a young man, obviously. I need. I want to know, were you into building blocks and building <laughs> things, <laughs> that, right? Yes, but, I, I have a five-year-old son, and I'm still working with Legos. <laughs> yes. I knew it. I knew it. Because I have two sons, and I, mm -hmm. I just I had to ask that because it's funny how we end up with our childhood dreams or interests and not even knowing it. Mm -hmm. So that that's fabulous. People tend to ask if I drew a lot when I was a kid, and okay. I did. My my godmother always had a, a pad and a pencil okay. in the drawer next to the front door when we came in, and she didn't have a whole lot of toys, and so. I would grab the pad and the pencil, and as we were visiting with my godmother when I was young, I would always be drawing. Love it. Yeah. Now, and don't tell me you were drawing buildings then. Mostly cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I love it. Yeah. That's okay. so great. Mm -hmm. So, so you with the marketing, uh, give us a little idea on how you are helping with the marketing and where you're going besides the chamber. And talk about the chamber because you guys are fairly new with the chamber too, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They're so, one of our new members this year. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Good <laughs> choice. This gal. 
We'll make it happen. If you haven't seen <laughs> no. it yet, you will. <laughs> yeah. So um, mostly really what I try and do is network, meeting people in different places that are related to what we do. So um, I reach out to um, people in real estate, you know, commercial realtors. I reach out okay. to um, uh, property managers, people who are managing properties who need, you know, to uh, think about are they going to expand, are they going to change things, are they going to work with tenants, you know, to um, improve the property. And um, so just going around and going to different networking groups like the chamber, right? Yes, because the chamber is also kind of a networking um, uh, platform. Yep. So we yep. meet everybody and go to different places. Now, of course, we're all meeting on Zoom, but that's okay. It's still uh, working. And um, that's pretty well it, creating relationships. Yeah. And, it's uh, really difficult yeah. these days to try to meet people and to try to, because so many people are getting tired of Zoom. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, um, yeah, but, but it, it's a very good alternative. <laughs> so you've got to be very yeah. creative, too, yeah. with how you're meeting people yeah. and developing relationships that way. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's no way. residential at all. No. Okay. Because no, no because I'm I was thinking big buildings. I'm thinking apartments. Apartments are going up like crazy. Mm. A real estate market is going through the roof. But, but that's right. a commercial. But uh, apartments are commercial? Our apartments are commercial, and so right. um, you know the the workflow between the single family residence and the commercial type building are different. So um, single family residence, you know, requires you know some. Uh, higher levels of communication because mm, sure. hu husbands and wives tend not to talk to each other as much as they should. Oh and yeah, that would be a lot of back and forth, and then changing mm -hmm. their minds mm -hmm. and right. And mm. so there, there's some marriage counseling involved. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, quite honestly, I, I work better with people who make faster decisions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, more corporate mm -hmm. mindset. Right. Yeah, well, that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I'll tell you, you reduce a whole lot of stress that way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> on your yes. Yes. Yeah, there's less emotion, I think, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. I need to introduce you all to um, Yvonne over at Icaria. Um, and she was on, was it last month or it may have been the month before, um, with the new apartment complexes that's because they are, um, the company is all over the country. Oh, that'd be oh. wonderful. And yeah. um, that will be a really good one because they are the nicest people. Mm. And Yvonne was just really fun to be here. So so can I just um, ask you, can Daniel tell you about the coolest projects that he's working yes. on right now? We have about a minute, so how fast okay. can you All talk? Right. Tell us. Okay. <laughs> FBOs. Yeah, yeah, FBOs. We found ourselves in a little niche where we're um, creating private airplane terminals. For <gasps> oh, you're kidding. Around the Ooh, country. Yes. how fun. Yeah, so um, whenever you whenever you take a prop plane or, or a golf stream into mm -hmm. an airport, you know, they don't, they don't come out into the commercial terminal they they have their own private terminals nice that they utilize. and so uh, uh -huh. you know we're doing work for some groups that that develop these types of properties and so that neat. is yeah. very cool very cool that and now we know for <laughs> well our i'm just thinking again of, of, <laughs> you know, i've already got two people I, that i'm going to introduce him see, to i yes. love it Yes. Well, that okay. is so great. Well, Website. continued good luck to both of you. And we're glad that you came on the show today. And we'll certainly be telling everyone about your services. Thank you so much. Well, thank and you for thank us. you for being with us. We're going to be right back with more from My Chamber TV. Thanks for joining us.
everyone. Welcome back into My Chamber TV. We are the heartbeat of the Tampa Bay community, and today we are featuring the Tarpon Springs Chamber of Commerce. I'm your host, Barbara Marville Kelly, and with me is Jean Hungerville, back by popular demand as always, oh. and another oh. great show as always. That's I have good. to say, though, the gentleman to my right happens to be another person back by popular de mm. demand from a different chamber. That's right. So it's great to have you with us, Pat Del Bracco mm -hmm. with Speed Pro. We were actually at your studio on location at one right, time, right? That's true. How long ago was that? It that, hasn't been that long. No, it was probably eight months ago. Yeah. yeah late, yeah, yeah. late 2019. Yeah. yeah. That was good. It was good. Yeah. And everything was set up so beautifully and you do such a great job. Thank you. How's business for you these days? Well, it's kind of slow right now because uh, many of our customers have not reopened, but um, there's a, um, a main part of our business is hospitals and schools oh. and so we are doing a lot of it's keeping us busy let's Good. just say that Good. yeah but some of our really big clients are are not really operating because uh they're mostly event planners mm. and trade oh. show conventions yes. customers, and they're not in operation until the latter part of this year maybe even next year Okay, yeah. but it's good that you do have the hospitals. And that's the, true. You know, as they say, when one door closes, another opens. Yes. It looks it's like so that's true. what really happened. And when things do open up, which they will, yes. right? Yes. You're going to be way ahead of the game. We're ready for them, yeah. that's for sure, yeah. Um, one of our other customers is PDQ, one of our restaurant customers. Uh -huh. And they continue to stay open across the U.S. and are doing real well. So nice. that's another piece of the business for us. Okay. That's, that's excellent. Mm -hmm. What do you specialize in? Well, our primary uh, specialization is trade shows and conventions and meetings. But we also, um, we do vehicle wraps. There we go. We do, uh, there we are, yes. Nice. We do wall murals. We do window perfs. Um, we do signage. And we do um, precision digital finishing like you see with the contour cutting of okay. this image or of that cute little image this <laughs> image here this is hugh in the printing business hugh you know ah, with the with I the uh cute. colors and everything i yeah. got it this is our icon that's our mascot he is so cute yes. i know yes. with the polka dots in color that's correct. <laughs> i love it yeah um and the other thing that we specialize is is vehicle wraps and one thing that we did early on in our career owning the business the last four years is we wrapped a two tractor trailers for Tarpon Springs Leadership Conservatory oh, for the high school okay. band. The high school. So we've done the whole oh, there fleet of theirs. And nice. this was given to me by, by my production manager as a uh, it, it, we were really wrapped around this project for quite some time to get it so done to speak. just right. Yeah. <laughs> so, but we're happy it's done, and they're happy with it as well. Yeah. That's yeah, so that's great. That's the Tar Tarpon Springs Band. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they're amazing. Yes. How they fun amazing. is that? Yes. It's, it's, these wraps are great advertising. They are. Well, yeah. you also did the wrap for the Upper Tampa Bay Chamber on one of their vehicles. Wasn't that it? Yeah. Right? We've done their trailers. We've done their um, RV. Okay. Yes. Yeah, we've done quite a few uh, large size vehicles. Which is how I met you, because right. we were working on that mural that's on the side of the building for the chamber, and it was like, how do I get this up? Because Christopher Still was not going to take a full year and paint it, and we were looking at a variety of different ways to maybe try to do it, and Jerry Peruzzi had said, here's who you need to talk to, and you and I started talking, and he said, no, 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 you don't want to do it that way. We have a better idea. And hopefully um, that we'll be able to put it up on the screen here, but the mural on the side of the building was this beautiful painting from Christopher Still. It was put on a very thick, well, you describe the process, because well, it was... First was off, go back to the uh, original introduction. That was a great introduction of Jerry um, contacting me. There it is. Yes, nice. there it is. It, oh, beautiful. That sits about um, 30 feet wide by 14 to 15 feet high on the side of the visitor center, which is where Chambers the building. Chamber of Commerce is. Yes. So we... Um, Corner of Tarpon and Pinellas. That's where it is, yes. Mm -hmm. We thought, um, as opposed to putting it onto a substrate, like a, a piece of metal, um, 
there was a way of wrapping it so it would be seamless. It would look like it was painted. And so we could really replicate uh, Christopher Still's artwork much closer than doing it on a piece of metal or a mm -hmm. piece of wood. Which is where we started. Which is where we started, yeah, exactly. And um, the material that we used is a premium vinyl that contours into the concaves of the wall itself. Oh. So it's, and it's heat um, pressed so that it really looks like it's been brushed onto the yep. side of the building. That is so fascinating. Oh. So it's really, it's, it's, it's kind of like the same concept as a wrap on a vehicle? To some only degree on it wall. is. Yes, exactly. That's very similar. Wow. But it yeah. went up in strips and it, people drove by and it took one, one day to put it up. To install it, yes. To install it. But mm -hmm. multi, the, the prep work all the way up to it, you guys were so amazing with working with an artist mm -hmm. and getting the colors exactly right. And yeah. one of the things was there's sunscreen on it so that it doesn't fade. Well, then right. that changed some of the definition. Mm -hmm. And listening to your conversation, the detail that you all went to with the with Glenn, your graphic designer, and working with Chris on how do we do this, and, and then he pumped the contrast so that it were. I was in just right. so impressed with how perfect that you wanted to make it. Yeah, well, we tried to, our primary responsibility is to meet our customers' expectations, and dealing with an artist, they have a very high level of expectation so that it represents their work. Mm. Sure. And so putting on the laminate, which is the UV protection, um, it sometimes affects the colors and the shades. And Christopher was very concerned about that. And so we had to make sure that we used the correct type of laminate so it wouldn't affect the shades oh, yeah. of his work. Yeah, exactly. And his work is, uh, is sort of 3D. We, yes. had, we had them... As guests here, didn't we? Nope. No, that, Who was it? that was Robert Stackhouse. Oh, that's right. Okay, yes. last, that's right. Last month. Yes. That's right. The, yeah, I'm so fascinated by mm -hmm. this because if a, a wall mural artist came to do that, I know I did wall murals for my kids, and it took me forever. One wall. Right. Right. Yeah, but that would be a year, and that's a very famous painting that yes. he did 20 years ago. Correct. And, and that's so tarpon. It is, and it is now, you know, just signifies the chamber there. And it was just, well, you've heard the whole story mm -hmm. of this. But mm -hmm. just the fact that people were in awe, walking up to it and putting their hands on it, saying, this is not painted? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because it is so thin. And so we, you just captured the brush strokes. Well, it's put up, and then it's heat sealed yeah, into the, the building. Way, yeah, the way you did it. Mm -hmm. And the building is stucco. So it's got all mm -hmm. of the, and, but they went in ahead of time, the prep work to fill this. Uh, I'm, I'm in How long did it take to do that? One, well, you did that in one day? Well, we, we did some testing to make sure that the vinyl True. was correct, that the um, laminate was going to be correct to maintain that authentic look and feel mm -hmm. of, the, uh, of the wall and of the painting. Um, but when it came down to it, our guys brought their... Um, the team of three, and they installed it all in one day, yes. That's fascinating. Yes. Yes. It, yeah. it stopped at about 8 o'clock that night, wow. and the lights on it then, as the sun was going down, created, I mean, just was just magnificent. What it's a moment. It's a fabulous place for photo, photo opportunities for visitors and yes. such to be able to take um, pictures of themselves. and Selfies, yeah. Yeah, make it a wonderful time. Our girl, Chris Ola, needs to remember that when she does her tarpon tours. She does. She's been over there already. Oh, awesome. awesome. yes, she has. That's, that's good. So yes. That's great. Fabulous. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's great. I, I wanted to ask you, too, now, you have been a member of other chambers. Yes. And how long have you been a member with tarpon? Uh, about eight months. Yeah? Somewhere around there. Yes. How's it been working for you as far as interaction? I know Jean does above and beyond. Yep. Well, <laughs> one of the reasons why we joined is specifically because of Jean. I'm not surprised. Uh, we, uh, sh she moved me in terms of her level of commitment, knowledge, and what she's accomplished so far oh. in the chamber. Oh, yes. We wanted to be a part of that. 
That's and so, I appreciate that. Yes. But it was one of those things, too. You're now working with our public art committee yes. on possibly doing some other murals in town. Cool. And it'll be a longer range project mm -hmm. going on. But I was hoping, but, and when we had the unveiling of this, um, it was one of these, oh, this, you know, looked to, everyone took a look at it. And the public art, J Joan was there yes. and said, Wow, we need to take a look at this. Yes. I was just going to say I could see the wheels in your in your mind moving forward with this gentleman. <laughs> I knew yeah. you had an agenda there. <laughs> so this was your first artwork. wall mural with um, there. with tarpon. Okay, with, yes, with so the chamber. Just, yes, but what oh, a great yeah. introduction. That's right. Oh yes. my goodness, because they were there during the unveiling. It's going to be so. perfect. Yes, yeah. it'll it'll be, it'll be what super. a match. So we we were really pleased by the turnout of the um, of the wall mural. And of Christopher's really uh, appreciation for what we were able to accomplish. Yeah, yeah. that's that's a massive. Yeah. He massive. came back the next day and was walking oh. by it, looking at it, saying, and he, I went out to him and he was saying, "Well, I wondered what it would look like this large." Mm -hmm. And he, I mean, he'd go across the street and then he came back and he put, he, I mean, he was very taken with yeah. it as well. Oh. I mean, it's just it's so huge. But you also do some other um, things since COVID-19 has been here because I've been we putting have. some ads out for you. Yeah, one of the things that we definitely want to be able to do is uh, help businesses reopen mm. or operate safely in today's environment. So we offer um, protective barriers like um, mm -hmm. acrylics mm -hmm. for people that sit close to each other or deal with the public close to each other. Uh, we also do signage, whether they're floor graphics, wall graphics, or freestand signage for um, things like um, reminding people to wash their hands, six feet distance, those type of reminders. And then we also offer sanitation stations for um, hand sanitizing. So we have a variety of different things specifically for today's world that we're operating in. That's really good. Yep. It's good to see that you jump in there because we don't know how long this is going to carry on. That's true. And um, safety is a number one key factor. One of the things that we have just um, introduced is a touchless, I don't know if you're familiar with a QR code. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. This is uh, NEC, um, I think it's called NEC technology that allows you to use a phone so everything's touchless mm -hmm. and it could take you to restaurant menus mm -hmm. while you're there mm -hmm. so you don't have to deal with a hand menu oh. mm -hmm. or if you go to a museum and you want to see a little bit about the history of the painter the artist whoever it might be you can put your phone up to it and it'll take you right to that information oh it's all touch touchless yeah. that's, that's great that's yeah. really I never really gave the thought. I've got the QR code on my phone. Yes. And, I, and I've used it. But yeah. the menu thing, I've used, mm -hmm. and I don't remember where it was, but sometime in the last month, um, it was pull it up on your phone. Okay. Mm -hmm. The QR codes, you have to download an app, right? And it could take you to a static site. The This technology is called InfoLinks. It um, does not require an app. Oh, cool. And it can take you to a variety of different URL locations. That's very cool. Yes. I want to thank you for joining us today. I'm this happy has to be been here. so fascinating. Yes. And you're in my town. I, <laughs> I have to come over there and get a shot taken. <laughs> yes. We'll see you next That's time. That's true. Yes. Thank yes. You. Thanks for being with us. We'll be right back. Awesome.
Hi everyone, Hello. welcome back into My Chamber TV. We definitely are the heartbeat of the Tampa Bay community. Today we're featuring the Tarpon Springs Chamber of Commerce. I'm your host, Barbara Marville Kelly, and we happen to have Jean Hungerville back always by popular demand. Thank oh, you for joining us. So sweet. How long have you been with Tarpon Chamber now? It's been three and a half years. Has I cannot really? believe it. I know, and so much you have accomplished over there. You always bring in a great lineup of guests, and it's always fun to do the shows because I love interviewing the business owners. And today, I mean, finding out some of the artwork that is done on your building through oh, yes. Speed Pro. I know. And uh, the architect, the young architect that has oh, such Daniel. a wonder wonderful vision. They were just a delight. They really were. Yeah. So and he used to work with one of our other members who's been around for a long time and then went off on his own, and he's got a great backstory. But one of the things I love about the members that we have is they're interesting. Almost every Aren't single they? one of them every have, one of them. have yes. a great, um, great story, how mm -hmm. they got into it. I love this when you asked him about Legos yeah. because that is just so typical. And, you know, and he's very quiet and all of a sudden you get this other piece of personality. And I'm finding a lot of our members are like that. And I think looking at our members and digging into who they are makes adds to the success of our chamber and why people not just why do they do what they do, but who are they? That's right. And that's one of the reasons why I've learned over time about people, and especially in doing these interviews, I just from my heart decided to start asking people, especially with something that is a trade that possibly they had this interest, uh, an attorney. She was known as the debater in the family all the time. Okay. And, and that was one of the interviews that got me going with asking people. And I just had a feeling. And, and, of course, knowing my kids and John Gaston here at the studio, they're all into sup the superheroes. Okay. I'm living through superheroes with my grandson now. And it's, I just find it so interesting that they had that interest that becomes a passion many times as an adult. And you never know what the kid's passion these days is going to become in the That's future right. because the future is unknown. The future like, is, yes. Wow. It, it is. And, you know, that's a good segue into the future. Um, and whether or not you may be fearful of the future or you're wondering if your future is uncertain, you know, when you tune into our shows, you're, any of the shows that you see here on WeBeam TV are mm -hmm. very inspirational and motivating. And it takes you away with all the craziness that's happening today okay. with this COVID-19 and all that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a, a little funny little little story about the COVID because my daughter-in-law, okay. she came over and visited me just by accident a couple weeks ago with my grandson. He's at the door with a, I, I heard this pounding in the front door. I answered the door and I didn't see anybody and I looked down and there's my grandson holding oh. a bouquet of flowers. So they came in, brought us lunch and all. And, and she, we were talking about COVID and she said, uh, I've got, co I've got COVID 30. And I go, what, what do you mean COVID 30? <laughs> she goes, I gained 30 pounds with COVID. Oh. I go, well, I got COVID six because <laughs> oh. I gained six pounds. And so uh -huh. we try to make a little bit of fun with well, uh, that because it is. You, it's the one means of having your sanity. And, and, and you know when we come here, oh. it's always fun because John's yes. a blast and we just have a whole well, lot of fun. And this is one of the things we can really count on, too, because watching him go through after a guest leaves and then a new guest comes in, yes. but cleaning everything down and spraying yes. and doing all that um, yes. makes me feel safer. Yes. Um, the fact, and that was some of the questions that were early on is how sure. are we going to be able to do this because with these, these headsets. Sure. And he does a magnificent job of doing that and being very careful about all that. I'm glad that you mentioned that because if you happen to be a, a, a business member of the community in Tarpon Springs and you are a member of the Tarpon Chamber, that's awesome. If you're not, you might want to think about becoming a member of the Tarpon Chamber because you have the opportunity of coming here to the studio. And if you're a little bit far away, we're, we're doing the Zoom thing. Everybody's doing the Zoom thing. And I'll tell you, it's working. So it's a matter of being creative and working around it. And that's what mm -hmm. we're doing here. And I was just saying to Jean during our break uh, that 
I was homeschooling my grandson for almost that. four months. And you guys talked about it on the air. We talked about you. And made fun of me. John was making fun of me. Who's learning from who? <laughs> and that was about the size of it. You hit the <laughs> nail on the head on that. But I learned so much of you doing your homework, my dear, uh, oh. in the public and, and getting information, getting information out to you, real, genuine, authentic information that you can count on because you do your homework. And, oh. and I can't thank you for that. That's my town. I live in Tarpon Springs. I'm 10 minutes from, from the chamber. Well, my big mouth got me in trouble on all of that. <laughs> <laughs> what I ended up doing to get all that information is when the first part of the um, CARES Act came out, which was the federal, mm -hmm. um, I took a quick look at it. And as my background as a former lobbyist, um, was looking at you know the high points of it and realized that that was only covering... Um, in co covering salaries for employees, and it wasn't covering any overhead, and it wasn't covering anything, rent, utilities, food costs, and I was immediately thinking restaurants because they were closing down, and, and, and I picked up the phone, and I called um, the senator's office, and Senator Rubio's aide, um, Taylor Sanchez, you know, chatted with me for a few minutes, and he's in and out of our office. They quarterly come in and do constituent services, so I felt very comfortable doing that. I said, wait a minute. You need to get this message to him that this, this has been left out. He said, yeah, we know the U.S. Chamber is already ahead of you on this one. But, by the way, they are putting together a coalition of called the Team of 200. And it was chambers from across the state that would meet once a month or excuse me, once a week, to talk about what was going on. It was every Tuesday Zoom conference at 10 o'clock. So I got on that with the, U the state chamber and was able to get all of that information ahead of time. Then on um, the governor then had um, a conference that was on Fridays. And a lot of times it was the state chamber that was running it again, and oftentimes it was his chief of staff um, coming in and talking about what was going on at the federal level. Then back to the Tuesdays, we would then have um, all of the different secretaries from the, the governor's, uh, governor's cabinet coming on, giving us updates, what they were thinking where all this was going. So that's one of the things, saying, hey, wait a minute, you've forgotten this, gave me the liaison to be in on all of these calls, and it was really, really very valuable. Gave me my cheat sheet. Mm -hmm. Here's where you look for this. This is what's coming up. Um, for instance, in that um, CARES Act, the PPP, as, we were, as it was called, um, it covered employers, it covered um, employees that they could then keep on um, staff in order for them to be able to cover yes. then it's got that but then yes. it included overhead and I don't know all the details of of how much and what ratios were but um, and some of it I have forgotten but I was also aware that 501 C6s which is all the chambers in the country um, were in the bill until two days before and they traded it out in order to be able to cover the funds and move them to hotels the hotels, even though they were more than 500 employees, which mm -hmm. was the threshold for this, the hotels have a lot of, of workers who are on minimum wage or slightly above. They needed it worse than these, these other businesses. So that money got funneled over to them. So I really, even though it hurt all of us chambers, we knew two days ahead of time before the bill came out, before all that was done, what was going to happen so we could prepare. Now... That was early on. Then further on down, they added it and took it away. And then we're, we were able to get in on the economic income um, disaster loan, um, which the chambers then were qualified for. And it was a loan. Um, so we were able to get some, some relief with some of that. But all of that information was so valuable for me to be able to synthesize yes. down and then have the links, and we put it out on email blasts to all of you, which um, I got great feedback from everybody on. Mm -hmm. Thank you for giving us the links so we didn't have to sort through everything. That's what we do. That's um, yes. make it yes. easy for the, because you have other interests that are going on. Your business, your business has to run, and so therefore that was what we were, well, we were I'll really you, pleased to be able to do. I can understand how it was appreciated by, by all. Uh, we're in times where we've never faced before, oh, ever. No. Ever. So the future can feel like it's uncertain, but maybe not necessarily if we can just kind of adjust our mindset. That takes a lot of really 
well, going to within. <laughs> it's the uncertainty, too. Yes. And not being able to plan, I know, really right. makes it difficult for mm -hmm. people, businesses as well. Um, but as Daniel was saying, or and was saying, the smaller businesses are the ones that are hurt the hardest yes. because yes. Um, it's it's a little closer to to the to the owner, of course, and of course. not being able to plan, not knowing when something is going to go to fifty percent or twenty five percent, or if everything is going to open back up, um, it's just really and then wondering if it, if that's really the right thing to do. And now we're faced with the kids, right? The children and right. with the everybody schools. has their school of thought, and there's uh, who knows if there's any right or wrong with all these decisions that are being made for us. I know. And it's always refreshing to have someone like yourself that really digs in and digs deep and under and, and brings it to the surface and shares it with all of you. So well, thank having, you for that. Well, having having owned a business for five years mm -hmm. um, at one point um, before my chamber career, I understand how your time is their time's taken up mm -hmm. with running the day to day operations. So being able to make it simple ma gives us value, and therefore we aren't able to have events. We're not able to do our networking, which is what I chamber know. events are all about. Remember, we used to sit here and say, if it's Wednesday, it's chamber day. Yep, and yep. it's Wednesday for Chamber TV. It was Wednesday for our twice first and third breakfasts, and the second and fourth happy hour and our ribbon cuttings, and all of that is on hold for right now. Well, and and it's okay because like we, you know, to some degree, if we can stay safe, stay stay healthy, and you know, follow the protocol as best as we possibly can and still see a vision for our future when this passes. And it will pass. It will pass eventually. And then we'll get back to all those different activities. And it's funny, it brings you to that sense of gratitude when you can be out there in the public and seeing your friends and your family and all that. So it, it's, it's kind of a little bit of a step back for, uh, my husband calls it a temporary inconvenience. Oh, what a That's, great attitude. I, I know. I know. Yes. Well, we had planned at the end of July to have a happy hour because Tarpon had closed down Hibiscus Street. The two restaurants that were there um, were all of the world and backdrafts are, are members, and we were going to do a happy hour outside so we could do social distancing. Nobody was going to be inside. We were going to market private party. We were going to limit it to 30 people. It filled up almost instantly. I bet. Um, because people were an anxious to get out, and they yeah. knew we would be doing the right thing. Um, George at Backdrafts was, was going to be hosting it. He did a super good job um, of putting all of this together. So on Friday, before the Wednesday event, one of his employees called in and said uh, he or she had tested positive. Uh-oh. And he immediately closed everything down, and we were talking over the weekend about what we're going to do, and he said, no, no. So I had to get the word out as quickly as possible, um, be, but not before he got it out for his um, for his 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 staff, mm -hmm. and get it, get it canceled, yeah. and it was postponed so in such a short amount of time. Hold your thoughts here, Jean. We're going to take a, a brief little time out. We're going to come back and talk more Good. about what's going on in okay. the area, if we can. Okay. Some updates. I know there's some things that are just unknown, and that's just the way life is, and it kind of makes it interesting, and then you can share what is known. So stay with okay. us. We're going to be right back with My Chamber TV with Jean Hungville and Tarpon Springs Chamber of Commerce. Here 
Again. Again. To continue our conversation. It's so nice that we're going to have two segments this time because there's so much to talk about. I know there is. And I'm just going to really turn this over to you. What what can we share with our folks out there that are tuned in as business owners and even non-business owners? I mean, there's people that watch our show that aren't necessarily business owners. They love the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can understand because I live in Tarpon Springs, too, and I love it. They've been there 22 years. What can you share on today's economy, anything that's going on in Tarpon Springs? Well, one of the things that um, we were talking about beforehand that I wish I had more information on, but I do have some information, um, Pinellas County has its own CARES grant that okay. gave out $5,000 per business. It also gave out, I believe, up to 5000 for individuals mm -hmm. um, that needed it as well, that were unemployed. And um, that was ended in the end of June. It has now come back. They have done, they're doing phase two. The commissioners voted in July to do this. I put the information out. We're now at the point where it's like, okay, let's go, let's do this. And I just put an email blast out yesterday saying, here's what's happening. They are, in the meeting that I was in, the um, county is putting together some business loan navigators and getting some business people or some organizations that want to do this. Unfortunately, I don't have the staff to be able to cover everything or we, or we would be doing this as well, but we'll have the information and be directing oh, people um, so that they can help people get through the paperwork and how do you put your paperwork together? How do you make this easy? So if they've applied before, they can apply again. If they were turned down before, they can um, still come back for it. Also, nonprofits and home-based businesses are going to be included this time. Really? And that's the big difference because nonprofits were left out previously. If you had a home-based business, you, you, weren't, uh, you couldn't do this either. And that left out a lot of small businesses um, that are thriving. Mm -hmm. um, or were, were thriving before all of this, and then all of a sudden it was closed down. So now that those will be included. Um, we still don't have a specific date. We're hoping within the next month that we will then have it, the application process opened, and then I will immediately be out announcing that and, and doing the same thing. Here it is. Here's the link. Here's Good. how you... But Good. what I had said to people is get your paperwork together now because when that opens, it's everybody's... It's all at once. All at once because... All of the other ones have been closed except for the EIDL, which is a disaster loan. Um, that one goes on for a couple more months. But um, this one is going to be another $5,000 grant, grant, not loan, coming from the county. So it, and it, again, it's for individuals as well as for businesses and the home-based businesses. Including independent contractors? Yes. Really? It will be something, and, and um, I can give you the website. Um, or you can go to the Pinellas County website, or you can call the chamber um, or email me, and I can give you the link um, at 727-937-6109, and I can give you the link, or you can email me at president at tarponspringschamber.org, and I will then send you the link. And you can go on the county website and take a look at all the uh, people that are included and in what the, the criteria is. This is really good information to get out there. And Jean, by suggesting to go on the website ahead of time and getting your paperwork together, that makes a big difference too because then you, you'll be ready to jump on board and won't be stressing out at the last minute trying to get it in by the deadline or whatever and the, that's the what, protocol is. That's what happened last time. Is, yes. Um, people were, and so it got so backed up, they extended it and people were just scrambling. Now we've got enough, and having the navigators in place too to help uh, to sort of take a look ahead of time at what do you have and mm -hmm. tell you, no, you need to have this together before you do that will make a big difference as yes, well. Yes, yes. Um, so that's the newest thing coming. Um, and again, I wish I had more specifics. We were hoping it was going to be by the end of July, but not quite. Well, but that's okay. Um, thank you for giving all that information so that they can call you, email sure. you, and, and get that because there's so many people that are just like, what do I do now? What, yep. Where do I go now? Right? And, yep. and we're looking forward and trying mm -hmm. to figure out what's the next steps. Um, the Chamber's now, um, we, we are on a monthly phone call 
uh, Zoom call with the chambers, all of the 11 in Pinellas County, talking about what are we doing now? Sharing information, oh, that's sharing this fabulous. kind of information, yes. and what has been your experience um, with this, that, or something? And um, it's that's been really, really good because if something doesn't work or it does work really well, then you're not trying to say, well, is this going to work? And somebody else has already tried it, and it either does or doesn't. Mm -hmm. So we're all here to try to help each other go th get through this. Mm -hmm. um, and also, you know, with some of the business problems problems that people have um, been able to help with and it's like oh I never thought about that let me go ask um, so you know I'm getting ready to sort of ask some polling questions just a couple so that if you've gotten any of the PPP money and or any of the EIDL money um, we want to you know sort of count who is included and who in Tarpon really was was able to get help and if you weren't why not and we'll try to help you with some of that as well so um, watch for that and I know people don't like to do surveys but it's only going to be two or maybe three questions so please that that helps us um, track what's going on and how healthy our community is. Can you do me a favor for anybody that's watching for the first time that maybe didn't apply for anything, can you just back up a little bit and explain what those programs were? Well, let me see if I can remember those. <laughs> I don't have my notes. The, the PPP, which was the um, the Paycheck Protection Program, right, um, was for businesses that to cover um, expenses, pri primarily paycheck protection for their employees. Okay. And one of the problems they ran into is um, unemployment coming from the federal government was $400 a week, whereas the state was, I think, only 200 a week. So people were looking at, well, I'm not going to go back to work because I that's more than... And the answer is no, that cannot happen. Um, and if an employer, and that was one of the things we talked about here, if an employer had an employee saying, no, I'm not coming back to work and the job was open, they needed to be able to, they needed to report them because that is, that is fraud. That's right. And, and, they, and they have to sign that yes. when and they file. So, oh, um, did not know that. So, um, that PPP was one of the first ones out and that was, um, one of the, one of the things that, um, everybody was getting on. And then there's, then came through the next phase of part of that was, there was a way to get part of that loan forgiven. Mm -hmm. I don't have my notes in front of me, okay. so I'm not going to speak That's to that okay. because I, I just want wanted get, you to touch a little bit yes. so that yep. it can it can pique the interest and raise the awareness. Yes. So that you, if you're affected, or if you have a friend, a, a business owner, that that you can look into this. And there may be a fourth phase of that coming in the fall, depending on, and it's in Congress right now, mm -hmm. um, right. but it's not zooming through like it did before. So there may be another another, another um, phase of that. We don't know for certain yet. It just depends on the economy. EIDL is an economic injury um, something loan. I can't remember. Uh, disaster loan, economic injury disaster loan. Mm -hmm. And so what has... Um, that is is a loan that is still open and and it was closed for a while because they got overloaded it was tied to the ppp and it got overloaded when the money ran out of the ppp then they shut that down and left it only open for agriculture that has now been opened back up and um then all businesses that are eligible, it's for small businesses, of course, mm -hmm. um, of under 500 employees, um, to be able to apply for that. And you do it all online. And again, I can give somebody the information on all of that, too, okay. um, if they're interested. Looking ahead, um, that's about what we have um, that, that's going is, is one and maybe two. I'm hoping that we're going to be able to have some events coming up. I do, too, because I tell you, the planning, the events are just, it's, they're almost indescribable because they're so beautifully done. Um, the things that we do over there in Tarpon Springs is really wonderful. And being outdoors, you know, the, it should be cooling down here hopefully one day in the near Not future. Not till the end of September, uh, probably. I know. But, but let me tell you what we've got planning. I am so excited. Oh, good. We've started, um, we've sent it out to the artists, and the next spring, the Fine Arts Festival um, will be um, the second weekend in March. 
and we opened it up to the artists on the 15th of July, which happened to have been my birthday. Oh, how which fun! Was great. But, um, and we had, uh, some of the artists rolled over into next year, but we had 36 new people sign up immediately. We only wow. have space for 200. I don't know where we are right now, but usually um, it takes a little bit longer for them to get kicked off. People are anxious. People are excited. Um, we have quite a number of the artists that are coming back. The ones that decided to roll their funds over don't have mm -hmm. to be juried in again. This, the same jury is going to be mm -hmm. operating. Um, the whole st the whole committee of volunteers, I sent the email out to let everybody know what was going on to make sure everybody was still on. And I thought maybe we'd lose a couple of people saying, oh, you know, I'm really tired of doing this. No, everybody is like, count me in. Of course, we're on. No, I don't want to have a meeting. We need to do it on Zoom because everybody's mm -hmm. still nervous about that. Oh, yeah. But, Absolutely. Um, but everybody is ready to go. Um, and so we've already started the planning on that. Artists are talking and talking. See, and that keeps the adrenaline going. It, it does. gives people hope. And and to be creative, especially as an artist, I mean, really, that it, that is I love it. Yep. I love hearing this excitement. Yep. We've also got, coming up in October, um, the Summer Splash. Now, Summer Splash is usually done in June, and we've moved it, and we've moved it. And this is the chambers in Upper Pinellas County, that um, the five chambers, and we do this at Innisbrook. The... Um, Summer Splash is now scheduled for October 6th at Innisbrook. We are going to be doing social distancing. We have gone through and looked at, okay, how do we not have booths back to back? And we're going to be moving out into the hallway. Um, yes, masks will be required. And we're putting all of these details together just like that. But I think people are going to be really, really anxious to get out oh, and yeah. see see what we've got. So Definitely. October 6th, we're still calling it Summer Splash. I love or it. Or Summer Splash Redo <laughs> or something. Thing. Um, it'll, but it'll probably have a few days like summer in October because it's still pretty warm. And it's be early. And we're not going to be charging admission this year. Oh, okay. Um, which was, was going to be really, really good. Um, I'm also looking at t um, the Thanksgiving weekend. I'm hoping that we're going to be able to do the Arts and Crafts Fair. Or the Arts and Crafts um, for downtown, it's in downtown Tarpon and it's over on Court Street. So what we end up doing is funneling people over to the businesses and it's Small Business Saturday and it's Thanksgiving weekend and hopefully we will be able to be, you know, far enough along that we will be able to do that. That's, you know, that's the only thing that we have in the future. All events in Tarpon have been canceled now um, through the end of September. So, you know, that's Wine Walk, that's First Fridays, right. and it's just because everybody's being safe and, and, try yes. and trying to be very, very careful. Yes. I'm so. looking forward to that next Wine Walk. Um, I've been in there a couple of times getting my hair done right there, oh, yeah, right on the main done. drag, and there are so, it really is very successful, yeah. and so I look forward yeah, to a lot of... Yeah, that's Merchants Association that yeah, puts that on. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be as upbeat and positive of and course. look for... And look for what can we do to, you know, since we can't network in person, right. everybody's very tired of Zoom I know. meetings, so nobody I wants know. to have Zoom happy hour. I know. Um, but but it'll, know, get, it'll get there. We'll get there. We and just have a few seconds remaining, and uh, I can't thank you enough. We could sit here and gab and chit-chat all day long because there's so much to, to do that about, yes. even in still a... In view of the fact that we have some little shutdowns and whatever. But yes. thanks for joining us. We'll yes. see you next time.